Hello, this is Greg Allison of Galactic Gregs coming to you from the Rocket Park here at the Marshall Space Flight Center. This is the formal, former Rocket Park of uh, the, the Army Ballistic Missile Agency. And I'm here today to talk to you about Starhopper and SpaceX, which that's not what this is. But at the end of this video, I'm going to mention the first ever Starhopper flight that actually took place on the moon four years before Elon Musk was born. So stay tuned for that little tidbit. What was that first Starhopper flight? My gosh. Well, I got to tell you, what SpaceX did yesterday with Starhopper in Boca Chica, Texas was exciting. They finally did their 150-meter uh, test flight, planned originally to be 200-meter, but uh, the FAA restricted them. They also had to get a higher insurance policy because they were concerned about the neighborhood, basically, and damage there, too. And so uh, there were a few other things. Yeah, you know, they burned a little grass out there in one of their previous uh, tests, and uh, I guess that got people a little excited. Uh, you don't want to be burning grass and catching the neighborhood on fire and having fire spread to almost over to your fuel depot uh, if you want to keep the neighbors happy. So, uh, <laughs> actually, I think most of the neighbors out there are pretty thrilled with what's going on from what I'm hearing. However, that said, this was very uh, revolutionary because it was the first, uh, you know, it was another flight of the Raptor engine. It was the last hop of the Starhopper that SpaceX developed. And we're on our way now to Spaceship One. And uh, actually, they are building right now, SpaceX is building two, two prototypes of their Starship One. They are building uh, one called XM, uh, excuse me, MK1 and MK2, Mark 1 and Mark 2. Mark 1 is being built there in Texas where they did the Starhopper flight and the other one is being built in, uh, in Florida at uh, Cocoa Beach near the Cape. So these are two competitions going on or a competition going on to build two vehicles at SpaceX. Imagine that. They got their own people competing against each other. So that is awesome. And uh, these vehicles may be largely close to being complete when uh, Elon May Musk makes an announcement about them uh, next month in uh, the middle of September. This will be an, a very exciting announcement. Uh, some people are expecting he'll be able, ready to fly one a month later in October. Well, I don't know. That's pretty fast. Uh, and I do have some questions I'm going to bring up in another video about some of the construction related to Starship One. That said, uh, the kind of capability they're talking about with Starship One is nothing short of revolutionary. And that will merit an entire video in and of itself. Uh, so I must say, please, if you haven't, I'm going to talk some more here. So please uh, subscribe to my channel, click the update notification bell because I got so many more videos like that to come. And also support my channel, click some links below from my sister channel, Green Greg, and check that out if you're interested in prepping, gardening, uh, what's going on in the world, those kind of things, uh, aside from space. Now this channel is mainly space and other maybe tech topics, but back to SpaceX. So I'm really excited. Uh, the, the capabilities, the costs we're getting to orbit are going to be revolutionary. What we're going to see, well, I'm not telling you anything new. So let me tell you something new. What is the first star hopper that I'm talking about? The one that actually flew on the moon. Well, on uh, November the 10th of 1967, Surveyor 6 landed on the moon. One week later, November the 17th, they fired its engines again, producing about 150 pounds of thrust, and it flew up, I think, uh, 12 foot high, and translated over maybe eight feet, and landed again. So that was a real star hopper flight in space, unmanned with the communications leg, lags and all that, with our antiquated technology, as we might say, from the 1960s. Hey, in the 1960s, we went to the moon, guys. In the 1960s, we did stuff that we've not replicated since. So, uh, okay, maybe I'm overpowering the microphone here. My apologies, I get excited. What people could accomplish with slide rules and design and uh, the ancient computers they had back in the day. And uh, we haven't done much since then. It just is uh, an example of a lack of willpower, but it was cost. There was so much cost in getting our stuff done in the early days. Now we've learned so much more, and SpaceX is on the verge of reigniting our dreams. 
with uh, Spaceship One and Super Heavy, which will be used to loft it. And so where's that going to take us? And what's going to happen with the NASA programs with, uh, with the uh, space launch systems and things like that? I'll be talking about all these and much more in the future. Maybe I'll also talk some more about these venerable old boosters, the ones that got our space program started. Yeah, look here, here's the V2. A4 as the Germans called it. I'll come out here one day and I'll give you more details on all these. There's the Redstone missile. And there's the uh, Redstone rocket that uh, set up as it launched Explorer 1. They called it a Jupiter C back in the day. Yeah, that's kind of funny, eh? But anyway, so here we are, ladies and gentlemen, on the precipice of a whole new space revolution and space race. I'm excited, so please uh, stay up with my channel. Like I said, if you haven't already done it, please subscribe to my channel and bang the update notification bell. And I will be talking more about SpaceX in the future. I'll talk more about the uh, Starship One and go into more details of its capabilities. I'm kind of tempted to wait to the presentation or something close to that, although I may come out earlier because this whole thing's exciting. Thank you for watching.